My name is John Heeman. I'm, I found this farm with my wife Irene. My grandfather Alphonse purchased the farm in 1932. Uh, he came from Canada. He first settled in Loyston, Maine. Then he came out in 32 and bought this farm. My father uh, took over in the 50s farming here. We had a tie stall barn. And in 1974, we had a major fire and the farm burnt and we lost all the animals. Uh, when we rebuilt, we went to a free stall because it's more efficient. And uh, this is what the farm is today. All the land that used to be pasture was actually uh, excellent crop land. So we converted all the pasture land into crop land. Uh, today we have 80 acres of corn. Uh, we have approximately uh, 140 acres of hay land that we uh, chop uh, haylage. The fields we chop haylage, we chop three times a year. The hay fields that we bale, we, we bale two times a year. The uh, biggest management change has been is that when my father and grandfather was here, we used to blow up an upright silo for corn and plant 20 acres. Today we have bunker silos and uh, we plant 80 acres of corn. No haylage when my father was alive and my grandfather, and today the bulk of the farm is haylage and corn silage. Uh, in uh, year 1999, I was chairman of the Nutrient Management Committee for the state of Maine, and we developed a nutrient management plan. Uh, in, in that respect, I used to use nutrient management on my own farm, and now it's a state law, and we've used nutrient management uh, for 30 years on this farm to improve the cropland, to get a higher production for the cows, to get better quality feed, so we buy less grain out and uh, get more production. The major change that happened after the fire was we bought average grade cows from a cattle dealer, a well-respected person, Stanley Hall, and we bought animals for $350 and $500. We started with grade. We built up this herd today with, from those first animals to a herd average of 26850 being the top herd average for the county, Androscoggin County. A few years back we did an energy audit that came in and found that uh, one of the major changes we could do was change light bulbs to use energy efficient bulbs and uh, most of the other things that we had done we already were doing. We had uh, a salvager that reclaims the uh, heat while we cool milk to, to heat our hot water. So uh, we've done a lot on this farm. We've done over the years we've done major projects with NRCS. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, two, ten years ago, we we uh, had got a uh, CS, CSP plan that acknowledged all the improvement we've done on this land, and so we've got a cost share on that. So we've done tile drainage, uh, we've done terraces, uh, diversion ditches on this farm, all to improve the the quality of the feed that we put in for the cows. Uh, right now, we're running. Uh, 75 milking cows and uh, about 75 heifers and basically I have two part-time persons that help me milk and I'm alone the rest of the day working. My wife does help me when she can. In 1979 we were the first farm to put a gravity fed pipe from the cow barn into the liquid manure pit. There's no uh, electric motor or mechanical, mechanical mean to put the manure into the pit. We also fill liquid spreaders by gravity. There's a pipe that goes out of the manure pit and fills the 3,200 the gallon tank manure spreader. Gravity, no mechanical, no electrical involved. It's very efficient. The liquid system has worked very well for us. The dairy herd uh, with, produces approximately 780,000 gallons of liquid manure a year. The reason the number is high is that we take our waste water from washing the milking system and we put it into this liquid pit. So we're achieving two things. We're achieving the use of uh, the manure and we're saving the environment by putting wastewater right into the pit and then spreading it on the land for the crops. We use this wood splitter to run our manure pipe which loads our liquid manure spreaders rather than using a big tractor. This wood splitter uses five gallons of gas yearly while a big tractor behind me could use 20 to 30 gallons of diesel just to run that pipe and it saves me a lot of money. Uh, I'm standing in front of the bolt tank and in 1990 we, we uh, put in what is called a salvager. 
it takes the heat from cooling the milk and puts it into the hot water so that we can preheat the water and that water runs around 120 degrees and we run it through the heat system to wash our equipment. Uh, in uh, 2000, that salvager uh, sprung a leak and we had to replace one. And in the meantime, my energy costs doubled without that preheater. We've done an energy audit and we've looked at ways of uh, saving in the smelt room, but because I have the salvager, there is really no more cost savings that I can do at this time. It's too costly to put uh, solar and uh, the salvager is doing an excellent job of saving us energy. Uh, we're in one of our buildings here that's a hay and equipment storage building. Uh, we felt early on, uh, and I've learned from my father, it's very important to maintain your equipment and keep it under cover. Uh, we have four tractors. Uh, they range from 155 hoss down to 70 hoss. The bigger tractor is used to harvest all the crops, while the smallest tractor is used to do the light work on the farm. Uh, we have a wider range of equipment. When I trade in my equipment, they're, they're worth quite a lot because they know they're maintained. Uh, years ago, we used to do all moorboard plowing. Uh, now, in 1983, we, we bought a chisel plow, which is a, a five shank. It's called a soil saver. It takes half the fuel to chisel plow rather than to plow, and it's much faster also, and it doesn't tear up the ground. It, it leaves it in a ridge during the winter so you can control erosion better. And then in the spring we come and just harrow it and, and put manure on the ground and plant the crop. We tried to do five years of corn and five years of alfalfa grass. We generally harvest the haylage starting in late May and every six weeks thereafter. Uh, bale and hay we usually try and uh, harvest that starting July 1st and doing a second crop in August. A corn silage is planted uh, usually about May 15th and that corn usually is harvested by the end of September. We use no cover crop because I'm alone and I just uh, haven't had time to do it and uh, any fields that we've considered will erode, we do not till them in the fall. Uh, we do have a nutrient management plan that tells us what manure and what fertilizer we need for each crop. Uh, we also, in the, in the barns, we use a, a bedding that it consists of uh, paper fiber, uh, ash, and sawdust. We use that because it, it puts the nutrients back into the field. The paper fiber uh, gives us a liming product and the ash gives us a potassium product. So instead of using sand, we're actually using a product that would turn back into the land and save us money. I've always wanted my kids or grandkids to get involved. The grandkids are a little young, so I'm still waiting for them. Uh, but uh, time and labor and weather is a major issue at this time. With me being alone in the field work, generally alone all day, it makes it very hard to do everything that I have to do. Uh, Long-term plan is we're just waiting another five years to see if any of the kids will be involved. I've looked over plans where you bring in an outsider, but uh, no, I've seen other farms try and do that. I've seen some success and some that aren't a, a success. Uh, the thing is, to, it would help in the next generation to uh, use a program that would help the carbon credit get some money to come in the, in the farm. Because my son doesn't like dairy cows, but he likes the farming. And the reality is, is to pay the taxes and everything, you need some sort of income to replace those dairy cows. Uh, the outside help today, uh, we just can't find them. Uh, we, we run uh, mixes and scales and cow health is important and people are uh, hard to find. People don't like working with animals and, and manure. Uh, so I'm hoping that this farm can continue with my grandkids and uh, if it's not a dairy farm, I hope it's some sort of farm. But this program, this carbon credit program would help to bring some needed off time uh, money. The, right now, at our age, we're, we're, we're making money, but the only reason we're making money is because we're, we're, we're killing ourselves. Uh, the labor, the, the money is not so much an issue of paying someone. The major stumbling box is uh, health care. There's just not enough money to bring in somebody full time and give them health care plan. Uh, we have enough problems just paying for our own health care. And so that's why we're just trying to hold on and uh, uh, you know, continue. I would like to farm another 10 years, but 
I, I, I need knee replacement, and at my age, 61, uh, and like a lot of other farmers that are getting that age, uh, uh, we become need more health care, and uh, the younger generation like this five days a week and uh, days off. And the dairy farm, you just can't have that.